I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on Treaty 6 territory and the Métis homeland, the traditional meeting place of First Nations, Métis and Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose culture continues to enrich our community. Welcome back to Verna's blog, and it's a real pleasure for me to welcome and introduce Dr. Roger Epp, who's our Interim Vice Provost and Dean for Faculty of Graduate Studies and Research. So Roger, welcome to Verna's vlog. Thank you, it's great to be here. So many of you may actually not know Roger. I mean, I think Roger's very well known in the university in general, but there may be some of you who don't know him. So Roger, you wanna just tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I, I started in, uh, at the university, not at the university because I was at, at Augustana. Uh, that's where I began teaching within the province. Uh, I came from Queen's University and um, so was at the time of Augustana's incorporation to the university. I was the, uh, the academic dean and so moved into the first dean role for Augustana campus and did that. Uh, came here and um, before too long I was drafted in, in political science and I was drafted in the provost's office and had some roles there, was director of U Alberta North and um, now I get to have another office in the university. <laughs> so I think Roger is an example of where you just can't get away from leadership, right? Because you're such a great leader. And uh, we had lunch, <laughs> kind of twisted your arm again. There's, there's a theme in these blogs. I tend to twist arms gently, but we had a conversation at that time, Roger, and I'm so pleased that you delayed mm. your retirement. <laughs> Thank your wife for that. Unretired, actually, and, yeah. unretired. <laughs> That's right. Um, and yeah. so I think when we had chatted about the role for FGSR and really taking a, you know, a bit of a, a pause and sort of relooking at where is graduate um, students and studies going and you know graduate students is such an important fabric of our university they're so critical in many ways not just in terms of research but in terms of teaching and of course all our faculty and staff who support them and we just need to make sure that we've got the right system the right processes uh, the right supports for them in place and so Roger tell me a little bit about what it's been like uh, since you started not too long ago and what's been your observation well, I probably told you at that first meeting that I didn't know a lot about FGSR. I have been, I've had the privilege to be a supervisor and, um, and I guess I would say I bring a, bring a heart for students to this. I have some sense of, of what it is to be a graduate student here, but because I was new to the office, I have done a lot of listening. That's, I suppose, my nature anyway. I have. So I've tried to talk to a lot of people about um, what I need to know to do my job. And some of that has been inside the shop where I've discovered lots of good people, a good team of people, but it's also outside and uh, people have lots of thoughts about what I need to do. So I've been listening, but also listening actively because some of this is about identifying immediate needs and making sure we are ready to support the university where we need to. I think listening actively is your superpower. Roger, do you think? I, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's fascinating because you quickly get a sense as you talk to people from across the university that there is no prototypical graduate student. There are many kinds of situations in which graduate students find themselves. There are different funding sources. The meaning of what it means to do your work as a, as a grad student, very different across the university. And yet, there is a common core of experience we want to work at. And FDSR needs to be a really active partner in, in, in supporting that work throughout the university. And I think, Roger, you acknowledge that there's really good people within FGSR, and I just want to acknowledge that, that there's been a lot of great work that's mm -hmm. been done to date. And in fact, you're using some of that work to be really foundational to what you're wanting to do uh, going into the future. So I, you know, first and foremost, thank you so much to mm -hmm. all the staff and team members within FGSR. So looking out a few months, and maybe not even a few months, but even into the next month, Roger, what, what are you planning um, for FGSR? Big thing you've put on my plate, uh, and, and it's timely, is a unit review. So as I have read back through the things I need to know, even in the documentary history of my office, um, I have discovered that it's really been, no, it, since 2008 that we've had 
external eyes with a focused set of questions looking at FTSR. Lots has happened within the university, lots of structural change, and so this, the review for me is not about whether there is an FTSR, it's about how do we fit best as a partner within this evolving structure, how do we support graduate studies. So unit review is number one and um, looking forward to that. The other um, matter that um, I would say you put on my plate, and there's a theme here, but it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing on my plate, is the question of minimum guaranteed funding for PhD students. So um, that's been a subject of conversation the last two or three weeks for me as we have started to make, well, it's probably less than that, it feels like two or three weeks, started to make that institutional intention clear. And so lots of the work now is talking to people to get a sense of where are, what's, what's the risk tolerance out there? What are the risk factors? What do we need to mitigate? What are the gaps we need to be sure we cover so that we, we get this done? I, I heard from a dean yesterday who on the one hand was not sure that a small unit could take on a guarantee, what would that mean? But was also sure that they were losing students to places that could offer it. So somehow we have to solve that one. Yeah, that's a really good point. And just coming back to the unit review, for me, you know, anytime there's a review, it's an opportunity for continuous improvement. At the end of the day, we always want to keep being better um, than what we're currently doing. So I think that's, for me, the major mm -hmm. reason for a review. And the minimum funding guarantee, um, it's the right thing to do. And that, for me, is what drives, I think, both of mm -hmm. us, Roger. And, and I'm really glad to see that the communities that we've gone out to to engage with have all been very supportive. Obviously, there's a little bit of apprehension with anything that uh, that is new and brought forward. But again, that work is not new, right? I mean, no. that work was based on a lot of, I think, three years of gathering information and data that resulted in a report from 2019, if I recall. In fact, I have been so checked out that I thought we had, had accomplished this. I thought we'd finally got that rock up the hill, yeah. only to find out that no, it's not quite up the hill yet. And, and it, yes, I think there's lots of support in principle. Everyone has a but that follows that. And so that's what we're working with now. How do we, how do we address those concerns and, and produce a model that is sustainable, that's expandable, because that's also a conversation we have here, and that works for everybody on campus? Well, I recently got an email from Ali Shiri, your mm -hmm. vice dean. And it really commented on how there was a report on uh, truth and reconciliation as it relates to graduate studies. And the U of A was seen as uh, an exemplar in some of the practices uh, that you do. And that was brought, mm -hmm. I think, by Ali's work, um, obviously FGSR, and Brooke Milney. Mm -hmm. um, she was very uh, impactful in that. So again, grateful for the excellent things mm -hmm. that are happening in FGSR. And I think we can all agree that we always want things to get better and to improve and to make sure that we serve um, the users of the system, who are the graduate students, uh, the faculty and the staff. So Raja, any last words uh, for the community before we conclude? This has been a, um, a decision week for us. And so yesterday we sent around communications to the effect that we were temporarily waiving application fees for Iranian students. Uh, really pleased that we were able to get to this point. Iranian students are a really important part of our graduate student population here. And so it's been important to acknowledge the real stresses they're, they're experiencing and, and in this way, but in also, it also in other ways, the, way we, the ways in which we're handling documents, the ways in which we're treating deadlines for them, I think is part of what we need to do as a global university to be responsive. And that is uh, what you can do as a leader. I mean, this for me just shows a positive impact of leadership and um, I'm so happy that uh, you br brought that proposal forward. Roger, again, it's the right thing to do uh, for us as a University of Alberta and as a global university. So thank you so much, Roger, for everything that you're doing and that you will be doing. Really um, appreciate you and I'm so grateful again uh, for your leadership and everything that you've done for our university. And I'll say the same. Great. Thank you to everyone.